So what is causing this unusual IgG4 antibody switch in vaccinated, mRNA vaccinated individuals? I recently received correspondence from one of the leading authors of the review that I discussed in the last video dedicated to this topic and they expanded their research and background as well as the review. I had the privilege of having early access to this review before it was submitted for peer review, which I believe is, it is undergoing right now. And it was really fascinating because the authors proposed the mechanism of what is happening, why the IgG4 class, which is taking place specifically under these these conditions with, the, with these repeated mRNA vaccinations for COVID-19. All right, so basically when they did a deep dive into the history of vaccinations, they noticed that mRNA vaccines were not the only ones to elicit IgG4 antibody production. Nevertheless, this is such a rare event it was, it was a surprise because it's simply an unexpected finding. But there are three other vaccines in the history of vaccinations that have produced such antibody class switch. That was HIV vaccinations, malaria vaccinations, as well as pertussis vaccinations. And based on the analysis of that information, the authors came to conclusion that, in their opinion, there are three factors that will contribute to this event. Number one, it is the concentration amount of the antigen that is being exposed to our immune system, antigen provided by the vaccination. Number Number two, it's the number of vaccinations that are taking place. So basically, how many times is the vaccination repeated? And number three, what type of vaccine is being used? So really to summarize it, the problem, potential problems here are as follows. Number one, there might be too much antigen being provided by the vaccines. Number two, there's too many vaccinations taking place. And number three, the problem is, is that only part of the virus is being provided as opposed to whole virus. So vaccines that only provide partial viral information might, all of these events combined, might elicit class switch to IgG4 antibodies. And the authors, they mentioned that, you know, there's a deeply entrenched thinking in the vaccination world, which basically states that the more is better. And they're saying that's not necessarily true. So why does this happen is because historically there has been certain events that have resulted in poor, poor immunological response to vaccines and hence higher and higher doses are always preferred. Typically what the authors mentioned what is happening is that you test the dose and typically you see what is the highest dose you can get away with before you start creating any issues. And then whatever that highest dose is, that's typically what we'd be going with. But there is also an emerging school of thought that this might not be correct approach and that perhaps lower doses is preferred. There is certain amount of data suggesting that high concentrations of antigen exposure can lead to numerous problems. So one of them, one of them we've already discussed previously, obviously, is that the immune system can become tolerant and simply no longer 
really caring about the recognition of the antigen. Another one though is that basically the immune cells can, can be induced to, to start dying. So this would be, this is, can be referred to as, the author is reminded that this is, can be referred to as clonal deletion. Another one is the system can become exhausted. We also talked about that. And then it can also become desensitized. So it will no longer be really recognizing the, the antigen. So clearly there's some evidence that antigen concentrations can negatively influence the immunological outcomes. But on top of that, the authors propose that it's the number of vaccinations that also could be an issue. And they reminded that based on their, their deeper research of available information, they mentioned that, for example, with the HIV vaccines, some of the historical largest failures in terms of ability to, to develop a vaccine. There was an example where a vaccine, two HIV vaccines were being tested and one of them provided better efficacy than, than other. And the one that did very poorly did indeed result in the production of IgG4 antibodies. And that one that resulted in this poor performance specifically was used seven times. So we're talking about seven, seven repeated vaccinations as opposed to the other one, which was used four times. So there's potentially correlation that repeated vaccinations can also be a problem. The other example that they mentioned that it was that, uh, that already brought up was the idea of this malaria vaccination. So malaria vaccines were used in children and it was noticed that those children that had increased IgG1 and IgG3 responses tended to respond very well subsequently in terms of protection from malaria. And those children that actually resulted in IgG4 antibody increase had a corresponding increase to risk to subsequent malaria infection so and then finally if you look at the history of of vaccination well there are other vaccines that have been used repeatedly in studies and they did not end up producing igg4 antibodies this is why this was such a surprise so why why this why now and the ones that have resulted in these IgG antibody class switch were the ones that were vaccines that were only vaccines to one of the proteins of the virus. So in terms of the COVID-19 mRNA injections, we're talking about obviously the spike protein. In terms of HIV, it was a, it was, the vaccine was developed only for the GP120 protein, which is a protein found on the on, on the HIV virus. And then in terms of, um, I believe um, it might've been the pertussis or sorry, malaria was the EBA 175 protein. Again, just one of the proteins of the virus. And it's only under these conditions that you then ended up having IgG4 class switch. So this is still fairly new information and this is a, a working hypothesis. So. We'll have to figure out this in, in due course and in, in, in time in the future, whether this is indeed how it works, but this is what the authors suggest that perhaps we might have to be careful with, with the design of vaccines moving forward in the future in order to ensure that IgG4 antibody class, which does not occur. On top of that, this is a, not a fast process. It takes a long time. So they quoted one of, the out, one of the authors of past studies and it takes multiple months before this for this class switch to take place. So that means if you are testing vaccines, you should be doing studies long enough to assess for su such an effect. 
So I thought I'd give you this update. It was uh, definitely a great privilege to be able to write <laughs> and correspond with the authors of, of, the, of the paper. And the other wonderful benefit of this <laughs> is the fact that we started discussing potential treatment for this IgG4 antibody class, which <laughs> recall in my previous video, I chastised the authors that this was something that I felt was not included in the paper that I wish it was. And here we are, we're now discussing this and I believe they might be including that information in their future, pay, uh, in their future work, published work, which is great. So can't wait to make a video on this as well because hey, I don't want to just be reporting a problem. I'm much, I'm much more interested to know that if there is a problem and people could discover that they fall into that category, what can they do? So stay tuned for, for that video, okay? Now, having this class switch to IgG4 antibody might not be without its consequences. And, and uh, some of the ones that the authors mentioned and I've discussed some of this before. Well, first of all, obviously, with reduced tolerance towards, towards um, spike protein, it means that such individuals are much potentially more likely to be reinfected by the virus. Another potential problem is, is that it could lead to development of chronic infection. And uh, so meaning that the, the virus might persist for a much longer duration of time uh, one, once the person is infected, it might. They want, another problem that they mention is that this repeated mRNA vaccinations, mRNA themselves can suppress, they might suppress the interfe proper interferon functioning, and that can, can result in, uh, in uh, reduce immune response towards, towards the virus as well not just SARS-CoV-2 virus, but other, other pathogens as well. And, uh, and they finally, they also mentioned that increased buildup of IgG4 antibodies could also lead to development of autoimmune diseases. So, uh, and the reason why is because basically, the antibodies might, they might, uh, they're often are associated with other autoimmune diseases. So they might lead to similar issues as well, including potentially autoimmune myocarditis as well. Now this is hypothetical, so not, not certain this would have to be obviously tested whether that indeed could be the case or not. But like I mentioned, if this is happening on a bigger scale, the good news is that we might have treatments available for, for this. So I just wanted to give you this super fun, quick update based on the conversation and this updated review that I was able to get access to before it got even published. And good job to these guys for digging deeper and deeper into this topic in order to find out, hey, what is, what is going on? Why, why is this happening? Now, the, another supporting evidence for potentially the problem in terms of repeated dosing, so having too many boosters, also comes from my studies. So they also did mention that. So this wasn't human, but my study specifically with um, COVID-19 injections. And Indeed, it was a similar thing. Repeated injections resulted in, in uh, hallmarks of basically immune system exhaustion as well. So they, that was, they didn't specifically show IgG4 antibodies, but you can see that there can be consequences. All right, that's all I have for you in this particular video. Put your likes, please, if you enjoyed this content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share the video, this is how we grow. Hey, check out uh, my uh, new Patreon account where I put more exclusive content that would not make it onto this channel. 
if you know what I mean, <laughs> right? And um, and uh, thank you for all the comments and questions. We try to respond to as many of these as possible. And then finally, also check out my COVID-19 Q&A events. If you want free tickets to those, please subscribe to the newsletter and it will send you free ticket. And the link to the subscription is in the description below. And finally, hey, also check out our survey on supplements, which is also available in the description below. The participants of those COVID Q&A events are particularly interested in natural medicine against, against obviously perturbed immune systems. So, and clearly some of my videos are, is now reflecting that interest as well. All right, bye everyone for now. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next installment. And don't forget, get outdoors as much as you can and spend time in nature, big or small. Ciao.